Hello and welcome to this video on how to compute confidence intervals for structural equation models and other models in the MPLAS software. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to structural equation modeling, multi-level modeling or latent class analysis and often including the MPLAS software. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also please hit the like button in case you like this video. In this video, I want to show you how you can obtain confidence intervals in the MPLAS software. In this example that I'm showing here, I have a two-factor model of confirmatory factor analysis, two factors F1 and F2, and each factor is measured by two indicators. F1 is measured by Y1 and Y2, and F2 is measured by Y3 and Y4. By default in MPLAS, in a confirmatory factor analysis model, the factors are allowed to correlate, so you don't have to specify anything else for those factors to be uh, allowed to correlate and the covariance and correlation to be estimated. Now we want to see how we can obtain not only the parameter estimates for this model, but also confidence intervals. You can see that in the output command, I have two subcommands, stdyx, gives me the completely standardized solution where both the observed variables and the latent variables are standardized. Standardized meaning they have a variance of one, which makes some of the coefficients easier to interpret, such as, for example, the standardized factor loadings. And then also we have the subcommand uh, C interval here. This is the general command in M plus that allows you to print confidence intervals. If I didn't have the stdyx subcommand in here too, I would get the, the confidence intervals only for unstandardized parameter estimates. When you include stdyx, then you get confidence intervals for both standardized and unstandardized parameter estimates. Now let's take a look at what this looks like in the output when we run this model. You can see we have a sample size of 500 cases here. We're using maximum likelihood estimation because the default in M plus is that we're using continuous or metrical response variables and then the default estimator for that for confirmatory factor analysis and path analysis and structural equation modeling is maximum likelihood. When we scroll down a little bit you can see the model estimation terminated normally we get a, an excellent model fit here for this uh, two-factor model. The chi-square test of model fit is non-significant, so the model does not have to be rejected. And then first, what we get in M plus after the fit statistics are the un unstandardized parameter estimates under model results. So those would be the unstandardized factor loadings here, for example, and then the covariance between the two factors, the intercepts or additive constants in the measurement model, the variances of the factors, which here are freely estimated, and then the residual variances as well. By default, M plus identifies a factor model like this by fixing the first factor loading for each factor automatically to one. So that helps to identify the model and provide a metric to each factor, the variances by default, are freely estimated, as you can see here. And then below this, we get the standardized results. In this case, the completely standardized solution STDYX that we requested. And now you can see here you have your standardized factor loadings, which are uh, some or oftentimes a little bit easier to interpret because those are in this type of model the correlations between each variable and the factor, because here we have a simple structure, each variable loads only onto one factor, and so these give us the correlations between the observed variables and the latent variables. And then also the um, covariance between the factors in the completely standardized solution is easier to interpret because then this becomes a correlation coefficient. So the 0.62 is the correlation between F2 and F1, which is easier to interpret than a covariance. So you can see the factors here are strongly correlated. 
And that's often of interest, for example, when we want to find out about discriminant validity or convergent validity or something like that. We like to look at these factor correlations. And at the bottom you get R squared, which gives you the variance explained in each variable by the factors, and these can be interpreted as reliability coefficients for each observed variable. Next are the confidence intervals, and first of all you get the confidence intervals for the unstandardized parameter estimates. And so the unstandardized parameter estimates that we already saw in the model results section are given again here in the middle under the column estimate. So those are the exact same estimates that we already saw with here the unstandardized loadings and then here the covariance between F2 and F1, the intercepts and so on. So these are completely reproduced. They are completely the same as above. And then on the sides, on the left-hand side and right-hand side of the estimate column, we get the limits of the different confidence intervals for different levels of alpha. And here you have to be a little bit careful because sometimes you can, one can get confused about 0.5%, 2.5%, and 5%. So the lower 5% and upper 5% columns give the limits of a 90% confidence interval because this means we're, so say, um, cutting off 5% uh, on each side of the distribution. So 5 plus 5 is 10. So it's an alpha level of 0.10 corresponding to a confidence interval of 90%. Oftentimes we want a 95% confidence interval, and so the limits for a 95% confidence interval you find here in the middle, so to say, between the other two, when you look at lower 2.5% and upper 2.5%. So now we're cutting off 2.5% on each side, which adds up to 5% total. So this is now our 95% confidence interval. Interval. And you can see, for example, for the covariance, if we wanted to see whether the covariance is statistically significant at the 0.05 level, we would take a look at the lower limit, lower 2.5% and upper 2.5%, and we would take a look at whether zero is included in that interval that ranges from 0.305 to 0.475. And you can see that that zero is not included, which means this point estimate of 0.39 is significant at the 0.05 level. There's a significant covariance between F2 and F1. You also get the limits of a 99% confidence interval, and that's the um, rightmost column and the leftmost column here. So those are the columns where 0.5% are taken off on each side, and so therefore it adds up to 1%, so you get a 99% confidence interval here as well. And you get that for each and every model parameter, that M plus estimates for your model, and you also get it for the standardized model results. When you scroll down, you get again the standardized point estimates in the middle, and then the same types of confidence interval limits on the left-hand side and right-hand side of that. And so, you, again, you can see that, for example, for the correlation between the factors, the lower 2.5% limit is 0.548, the upper 2.5% limit is 0.692. It's a fairly narrow confidence limit because we have a fairly large sample, so we have good um, power, so to say, to show that this correlation is significant. We have relatively low standard errors, which result in a pretty narrow confidence interval. And again, we can see that the 0.62 estimate of the correlation is statistically significant at the 0.05 level because zero is not included in our 95% confidence interval here. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about how to estimate confidence intervals in the MPLUS software. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to hit the like button. Also, please check out the description for additional free resources, including workshops and other uh, resources, and I'll see you next week.